Greetings, traveler. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of Chief's games. Chief is one of the highest ranked players in the world, currently holds 18,000 on the America server, and has held rank 1 in A many times before. Please enjoy. This is already interesting. We're in a beast lobby, so Terran seems good, but he's looking at my F instead. So I'm not sure if that's the 13 armor speaking, or if he's just not really a fan of Terran beasts. Nagas and pirates are in as well, so are dragons. So you do have a lot of alternatives to beast. You don't have to play beast. It is this, you know, the strongest accessor, uh, the easiest. Uh, oh god, okay. The reason why I say this is he found two front tracks, which is really good. Yeah, so he's gonna buy that and freeze. Moving ahead. Oh, he's on H's replay. Okay, random H's replay ad. Here we go. Let's skip ahead. <laughs> All right, this turn he just buys the second front rake. That makes sense. It's a little jarring. We jumped ahead, but that's okay. Uh, he actually rolled the third one in the shop. Okay, Jeef. Okay, so I hope you guys are all taking notes. This is how you do it. All right, and we're into combat. So with this early triple, usually when you play my Ev... Let me just skip past this. I don't know. <laughs> how rude of Jeef to not consider somebody might review his game. Uh, but the... Um... <laughs> The usual thing you do with my Ev is you want to triple into a six drop. That's sort of your bread and butter my Ev game. You stay on tier one, and then on the six gold turn, you used to hero power, but now that my Ev's turn is back to two, you do it on the seven gold turn, which means that you get your triple on the nine gold turn. Now, obviously, Jeef is doing something completely different, and that's for two reasons. Number one, he found a triple so early, and number two, it's quest meta. So in quest meta, you don't necessarily have to go for that six drop as my Ev. It doesn't really make that much sense because your quest might not want you to level and then it's very very difficult to do so having the triple come online in the quest turn is pretty good i think this goes to his hand first or does he no he gets to do the quest first that's fantastic so the reason why that's fantastic is he might have a quest that says you know have x amount of cards to your hand and then if the triple happens first that's bad five battle cry for moira Rylak is in. I think that has something to do with it. There are two battle cries in the shop here, but he wouldn't be able to rush to Moira. So he chooses to go for a four drop. With a four drop, you could technically hit a smolderer, which is very good. Oh, this is cute. Uh, so what he's doing here is he's hero powering quickly to make the shop a better eat. When you look at this, you might say, why not take the pirate that is 313? And you're right, why not the pirate? No, that's better. No, of course not. Well, number one, it's a battle cry for his Moira. Oh, it's just weird because it's hovering. I couldn't see how close he was to the combat. So number one, it's a battle cry for the Feldrake, but also number two, there's a lot of stuff you can do with Feldrake, with Fluidity, pull it back in the shop, trigger Battle Cry, make the dragon eat again. So there is definitely some advantage to it. It'd be funny if he evolved it straight away and all those arguments are gone, but no, okay. Oh, I see, okay. So we have Rylak, but we can't really get the Moira this turn. And even if we get the Moira this turn, it's not insane, right? We would just be copying the Synthesizer. That's not great, but obviously we grab Rylak because part of the reason I think that we took Moira is it was a beast lobby and Moira works so well with Rylak because Rylak has a battle cry and death rattle component to it, right? It's it's a death rattle that procs battle cries. So if you have double death rattle and double battle cries, that's super good. So he is actually going to go for the in combat evolve. What a meme. Sure. Get a good value traits. Proc our guy. All good. Chief takes front rakes over Selementals. Yeah, I've started doing that as well. Uh, it makes sense when you think about it. It's uh, more tempo. Your first turns are slightly weaker, and your turn three is the real problem, but when you get access to Scout, Chef's Choice, Lasso, the chance that your turn three really sucks because you didn't take a Selementals is so much lower. So I think that's... Uh, that's a reasoning thing, right, that, uh, that needs to be updated. It's since spells are in, it's so much easier to get good value on turn three, even if you don't have economy. All right, so here he's going to complete the quests, which means we are... That, that's why he um, got that money, by the way. Then he, uh, let's say he would have had a... Oh, you can hero power that. That's so true. <laughs> 
But but he could have rolled into Balladist, for instance, and then Balladist would have been better uh, if he'd grabbed Balor. But this makes so much sense. Wow. Yeah, Maiev is pretty good, huh? It's, you just get to do that. So now that he has Moira with that Rylak, he's going to gain a lot of extra money. So this is why it's always fun for me to see these. Like, what does a good player do with all this extra cash? In my own games, that's something we, we saw earlier when I was... Um, when I was playing and not super happy with my play, it's when I notice that I have a window to close, I have a window to win, and I let the window pass. So it's good to, you know, look at Jeef and see what what is he gonna do with this with these extra resources. The fact that we're on 31 makes this even more ridiculous. So we're gonna level immediately because we have 31 HP. We found a Dracosath, which is probably the best target to have next to a Rylak in this lobby. Uh, because not only is it battle cries, not only do it get stronger, it also farms you triples, which is so silly. It's it's essentially a fantastic Caligos trigger. Are we gonna hero power to pair here? Or do we want that smolder? I don't think we want smolder, right? Right, we have a Moira, it's procking twice already, yeah, that's so crazy, because I'm just looking at the Rylak, but we have a Moira on the board, so that is so true. Here we don't taunt extra minions, because that makes it less likely our Rylak gets full value, right, if, if we have another big, let's say we big, we, we taunt that Divine Shield, and then that Divine Shield soaks up attacks, then maybe the Dracosat will suicide before the Rylak's dead, etc, etc, so pretty awkward. Yeah, just 31 health with this board on turn 7, right? This is the 9 gold turn, guys. The 9 gold turn. Oh my lord, that's two 6 drops. Getting ready for Kali. Alright. This, this fight we are losing, but this is exactly why the... 30, 31 HP was so important. Even if he would take 15, which he's not, he would still be on 16 health minimum, which is pretty insane. Chief is too skilled. Yeah, I mean it's it's a lucky game as well, but it's uh I'm I'm sure we're going to see some stuff here that even with good luck, most of you guys wouldn't even think of, let alone execute. I love how he looks at the beatbox here. I think he's had a lot of cool beatboxer games where he's been swapping magnetics in the shop and he's like, eh, maybe. Yeah, that panda is also insane. Alright, unfortunately no Kali yet, but we do find this. See, this is what I love, right? The speed of execution with how, how well he understands which minion is staying, what is going. He's also immediately putting that uh, pirate on the board. Is it getting sold now because he's going uh, dragons instead? It might. Uh, that's kind of a whiff right now. Yeah. I think he might just... Uh, well, he's definitely going fluidity, right? If he sees it, which he will because it's chief. Finds the little optimization, right? Throws the buff on the phalanx in the shop so he gets more value. All right. So this is... Here I want to pause actually for a second because this is so easy to skip over. Now we're going to finish this turn, no worry, but the reason why I do these commentary videos is because then I can really pick and choose where we are looking. So remember that this 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 turn starts on tier 5. So he takes his triples and he was looking for Caligos, I would assume, or double Tephys. But the reason why Caligos is really good here is because he's got Moira and Rylax. So in the combat the Kali is going to farm a lot of value and tempo. And if you have to keep Rylak and a battle cry, your Tethys board is already a lot more difficult because you want to run two Tethys and you're going to run your Moira and you want to run your Pirates and you want to run your buff Pirates and you need a flex slot and yada, yada, yada. So it seems way better to go Dragons. But what I wanted to look at here is this, this particular sequence, right? So he goes to uh, level up immediately and then... When he has the dealer in his hand, he sells that Divine Shield Dragon immediately because maybe I can find a good pirate angle here. If he finds the second Tethys, even though it's better 
in my opinion, to play dragons from here, you might not find Kali, and that's just it, right? So he's on 23 health. If he doesn't build a strong board here, he can go below damage cap. So he has to have maximum chances to build a board right now, which is also why it's so impressive that he does this so quickly, right? He understands which minions are key, which minions to sell. You will see him sell the 3-1 Battlecry Pirate as well. Uh, and that's mainly because he has other battle cries in his hand, right? He has the Rodeo Performer that can stay. And then now that he has that Caligos on the board, he's going to value that Pirate way less. But the, the Caligos was the really big linchpin, right? It's like if you don't get the Cali, you can't uh, buff your board right now, even if you want to play Dragon so bad. But that's why the Phalanx is now going to stay. Uh, armor's fine, yep. And now this is, I just wanted to, you know, rewind that because it was such a beautiful execution. It's interesting to me that we got rid of the uh, battle cry, but I guess he doesn't really have that much hand space, right? I was trying to figure out what he could do here. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is actually cool. So... The reason why he does that at the end, why, why, okay, the reason why he's, oh no, <laughs> well, it doesn't matter anymore, but the reason why he sold that mutinous or why he threw it in the shop was he ended on double Rylak. I thought he was going to hold a Rylak pair and play double battle cry, but this makes sense as well. But um, he needed hand space because he was going to get a handful of those little smolder wings. But because our opponent ran that stupid pirate, we got nothing. Uh, we froze for Hamul, which is interesting to see. I am really not a Hamul enjoyer when I play dragons because there's um, there's so many shitty dragons you can get. But hey, if Jeef likes it, then I might like it too now. <laughs> interesting. He does want that uh, Hunter of Gather. For me, this is usually a bit too slow. It slows my game down, uh, if that makes sense. Oh, here he's trying to get that Hunter before playing the Battle Cry, but it doesn't work right now. All right, Warping. Tethys is out. And then I'm guessing... Man, I'm tempted to sell a Rylak here. Because I want to play Warping and buff it. We didn't lose, right? Yeah, that's a great board. I guess we play one Smolder Wing. How many are we getting? We're getting times two times two, right? For eight. Well, yeah, he's gonna sell a Relic. Okay, okay. I guess we triple Selden, right? Yeah, I get the Murrow. I like this. I like this a lot. Oh, Reborn! Oh, Reborn makes sense. True. Hmm. I don't know if I like the Warping being back. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. <laughs> okay. Now, we did taunt the Hunter of Gatherer just because every time we throw a uh, slime on it, we get two health on our whole board. But the fact that he's still above damage cap here makes it so like, oh my god, I can't believe it, but it doesn't die. It doesn't die. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine if that was two fights in a row where the fucking Moira gets sniped when he's about to fill his hand? Oh my god, dude. Oh. Ooh. That would have been... Yeah, I... That might be a stream ender right there. That might be a stream ender, to be fair. Yeah. Alright. Cool. Nice. Stream is saved. Let's go. Although, you know, it's not my game. <laughs> Needs a second. Caligos, probably why. Yeah, 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 but I mean, the, just if you if you calculate two gold for Hamul, in in my experience, it's a really bad deal. But again, right, Jeef is much better than me. There's no there's no question about it. So um, it means that there might have been reason because he needs another Dracosath and he had zero warp wings and all that. Trigger battle cry is still very good. Do, 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 do. Yeah, man, playing. Um, yeah, these order rings are beautiful, right? He's maximizing all his procs. It's interesting to see him play with the Hunter of Gatherer, because that's usually too slow for me. But I'm, I'm I'm guessing with the Mutinous spell, he's going to eat it whenever he can. I feel like we can just play Mirazant and roll for Mutinous, right? No, no, no. Does not want to lose anything. 
Hey, I'm all for it, though. I'm all for it. I don't love Hunter of Gatherer. But it's interesting to me that he ended up buying three of them earlier then. Yeah, does not want a triple warping. That's usually bad. Two separate warpings is far, far more, uh, far more value. And tempo, everything, really. Yep. And this is another thing. When you're playing Caligos, it's difficult to quickly evaluate which cards are worth buying, but a simple rule is economy and synthesizer. <laughs> and what I like doing as well is if I'm not running Rylak, I like to taunt my whole board except the Warpings, and then I will also buy Scavengers. And those are kind of the only battle cries I buy, especially when you have a Golden Brand. That, um, that feels very good to me. And just buying every battle cry will end your turn so quickly that in my experience you get way smaller. Turn 10, by the way. Yes, yes. I mean, we saw how strong his nine gold turn was, where he pushed a tier six there and, and set himself up so, and set himself up. So yeah. now he's, you know, losing cards because he can only hold 10, but the Rylak triggers still matter for Caligos. So he's still getting stronger in the combat. These are temporary buffs, but he's in such a strong position that temporary buffs are good because if that's the difference between winning or losing, he's then going to have the health to put the game on lockdown. All right, pump warping. Yeah, we don't want to triple that, which is why if we're going to cast Chef's Choice, warping is a great idea. Sometimes you just get a Chef's Choice from a rodeo performer and you have to get rid of it. Trigger battle cry, wee, money, wee. All right, does go for that. Oh my God, oh, I, I know why now. Yeah, I guess quickly check on Balladist if there's anything with like buff a guy and then eat it. But... <laughs> this is a fantastic shop. Yeah, see scavenger and ooze for me are great combinations when you're playing dragons like this. But because we're relying on Rylak, it would be a bad idea to taunt our whole board. Uh, we would rather just have the one Rylak taunted so that we can get the value. If you taunt Dracoseth and Caligos, then it's not going to work. And same thing with if you're playing Bran <clears throat> instead of Moira plus Rylak. It's pretty good to taunt the Bran as well to give it uh, some stats. Ooh, he hero powered the Rylak, so he doesn't get the triple now. So he's considering, do I buy it and, and wait two turns? I'm guessing he does. Otherwise, hero powering it seems weird. Oh my lord, yeah, this is so amazing. Yeah. The hand space on the hero power is actually going to be a little bit annoying. Yeah, I think we sell that phalanx and just end on the battle cry, right? That makes total sense. Yeah, fantastic. This is This is super fun to see. Is it sometimes a tactic to hold tier 6 units to prevent others from getting them? No, not really. This is a uh, this is something that, you know, almost anything can be justified in some specific situations, but I like to answer for the vast 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 majority of cases and for the vast majority of cases, no. You are not going to hold cards to deny. This is this is not how battlegrounds works. This is more a uh, team fight tactics type strategy. Um, where it's, you know, it's way more important in teamfight tactics to make your minions triple. So by holding certain key pieces, you can deny other people a huge power spike. But in Battlegrounds, you can buff your minions, which is not really something in teamfight tactics. Yeah, you can equip items and all that. But the fact that you can just make your minions larger in Battlegrounds means that there is less emphasis on tripling. At least in a lot of the compositions. Also, holding a card in Battlegrounds is such an insane uh, tempo loss because you're you're paying roughly one third of your turn to mess with someone or potentially mess with someone. So no, the 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 straight up answer is no. All right, I mean this is going to be just a comfortable end of the dragon game. 
excuse me. Because the, the really cool thing when you're... Ooh, Kelly. The really cool thing when you're playing... Um, when you're playing with warping is that it's so hard to scam you. You're so resistant to scam. I think we're just holding this Kelly until we triple, aren't we? Oh my lord. Oh, we want to make that golden, don't we? Oh yes, we do. Wait, what are we doing here? We're just cycling the rodeos, yeah. Plunder gives him one card. Sure. Oh my god, how does he do it? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Golden touch, yeah. Just looking for Cali now. <laughs> oh, wait. Does he have enough money? Because whenever you have Fluidity Golden Touch, you can theoretically make any minion on your board golden. I think he has enough money. Oh, we can't swap the Moira in yet, though. No, no, he needs to play out of Battle Cross. Well, he doesn't have to play all... This is kind of interesting. He has to play as many battle cries as he needs... Oh my god, Chief. This is where I get way too stressed. I can't do it. Oh my... Is he gonna do it? 30 on the rope, the fucking mad lad. And he's like, bye, bye, bye. Go, 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 go. I got it. No, no need to freeze. I'll be fast enough. Let's fucking go. All right, two seconds left, baby. Let's go. Plays the Rylak because it's gonna triple next turn. Oh my god, what a monster. See, this is something I just can't do. Um, that's just raw speed, raw decision making. I think an extremely small percentage of the player base is capable of just saying, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm making the Golden Boy right now. Which he didn't have to, right? I think if he freezes there and just plays a few battle cries, buys a card, he's still going to win the game. But, you know... If you're that fast, you may as well do it. <laughs> oh my lord. Pretty insane. Pirate would have been better to end on. No, because the Rylak can block Goldrin from dying. <clears throat> the Pirate is better if he needs more money, but he has Golden Moira. He doesn't really need more money. So you always have to be careful when you're looking at one of the best players in the world and be like, yeah, that play was, you know, could have been a little bit better. Now, that doesn't mean that Jeef doesn't make mistakes, right? But it's very, it's it's rare that people in chat are going to be like, oh, I think you should have done that. And it's like, no, actually, that would have been worse. <laughs> Did he scout he was versus Beast, though? Would Jeef know that he's playing versus Beasts? I would put a lot of money on yes. I think I think most I think the vast 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 majority of the time, Jeef knows who he's going to be playing against. Um, but anyways, whatever. He could have not played the Rylak and still won. Oh, he's gonna triple the Warping. So let's quickly have a look here because what does he do here? He checks the opponent to see what the board looks like. It's five dragons and they had the brand earlier, so probably Cali now, and. Oh no, it's Locket. It's lo oh, yo, wow, is he so good? He sees that it's Locket, so he can't keep the regular Warp Wings because if the opponent survives, he's going to steal a Warp Wing and then he's going to keep winning. That's so smart. It's also nice that he gets to. Uh, it's also nice that he gets to uh, go with the uh, double Cali now. He has eyes. Now nah, fuck that. Fuck that. I have such a strong autopilot decision of we don't triple warping that I might have not done that. So we're not going to downplay that to say like, oh, he has eyes. <laughs> that's that's just strong. That's well done. All right. Hits the Dracosat because... He <laughs> okay, well, you know, that's just uh, fortunate, I suppose, yeah. Oh, and a trigger battle cry too. And we go again, baby. Let's go. He has to sell it now, though. It's kind of sad. Look at that. Look at that, baby. Oh, my God. He's got everything, chat. I don't think the opponent's going to survive to steal anything. <laughs> Look at these animations, though. 
It's crazy, man. He doesn't even have the hunter gatherer on the board. But he's still getting a duck. Oh, Mara is going to do it, of course, because why not? Oh, no shield. Okay. That was almost too reasonable. Disappointed that Jeev didn't quickly slam the Miro there. <laughs> he is fighting dragons, though, so it's better to have Miro versus dragons. Damn it. Wrong again, chat. It's just better for him to have the Miro on this turn. This player's pretty good. Some might say he's pretty good, yeah. Some might say he's pretty good. I would say it's pretty atypical to see Jeef going into the potential final fight with the pirate on the board here. I think a lot of the time Jeef is very, very, very conscious of making the strongest board possible. But this is just so fantastic. I mean, Jeef is so strong that... Oh my god, what is this light show, bro? Is the pirate just higher tempo than a queen? Probably not than a queen, right? But... It's pretty hilarious. Holy crap. So, if you're wondering what the hell is going on here, he has a golden reborn Rylak with a golden Moira. So, that means the battle cry triggers once and then twice because it's golden Rylak and then times three, so I think six because it's golden Moira and then times three again, so 18 times and then times two, so 36 battle cry triggers. And then because we have two Kalis, it's what, 72? <laughs> 72 Caligos procs or something like that. <laughs> My math might be a little bit off, but it's a really high amount. This was Jeef. If you guys enjoyed the game, please make sure to go subscribe to him on YouTube and Twitch. And thanks again, Jeef, for letting me take a look at one of your games.